Welcome to your tutorial on chi-square analysis. First we'll look at setting up our data. Before we run our chi-square analysis, it's important to make sure that our data is set up properly. So if you recall, when we're conducting a chi-square test, we are looking at the relationship between two categorical variables, where both categorical variables are measured at the independent level. So what that means in our data set is that we should have two categorical variables and that we should have a measure on each variable for each person. Uh, so that means that a measure in this example for participant one on type of person and gender. So in this current example, we're going to look at whether being a morning person, an afternoon person, or an evening person has any relationship with gender. Uh, so one important thing to do before you actually run the chi-square analysis is to make sure that your value uh, labels are set up properly. So for example here we can see who the morning people are, who the afternoon people are, and who the male or females are. And if you recall, you do that in the uh, variable view window right here. So this will just make it easier to interpret the analysis. So assuming you have the two variables you're interested in examining, uh, you are ready to proceed. And now we will run and interpret the analyses. Now that our data is set up, we can run our analysis. So for this particular example, we're looking at whether there is a relationship between the type of person, so morning person, evening person, or afternoon person, and gender. Uh, if you recall, in a chi-square, we aren't really proposing a, a causal relationship between the two variables, so we can't say that type of person causes gender or gender causes type of person. We're simply looking at whether there's a relationship between these two variables. And since these variables are measured at the categorical level, uh, we're not actually looking at um, mean differences or mean scores or whether one variable increases, the other decreases. We're simply going to be looking at frequencies. So in this example, we have three type of people and, and on uh, the, more, the type person variable and two types of people on the gender variable. So when we actually cross these two variables to make the condition or the uh, comparison, we're going to have six different conditions. So we'll, for example, have um, a condition for morning people who are males and then a second condition for morning people who are females, and then a third for afternoon people who are male, a fourth for afternoon people who are female, and then fifth and sixth for evening people, male and female. And then what the analysis is going to do is it's going to compare the frequencies of each of those six groups and compare whether or not the frequencies we have in our data set are different than what we do expect um, if there was no relationship. So to run this, we're going to click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs, and then we have the option here. So basically, um, we have to put one of our variables on the row and one of our variables on the column um, uh, option here. So the only difference it makes is it kind of flips the table. The results will be the same either way. So uh, personally, I like to put the variable with more levels on the column side and then the one with less on the rows. So in this case, type of person uh, has three levels, so I'll put that in the columns, and gender has two. So if we look at the options here on the side, uh, you can skip everything under exact. Under statistics, we are going to ask SPSS to uh, provide the chi-square statistic, and we actually don't need any of the other options here. Under cells, uh, automatically it's going to tell us what we have in our data set, so the observed, but we can also ask it to generate the expected. Uh, so this would be what would, this is what it would be expected if there is no relationship. Um, you could ask for percentages and you can ask uh, SPSS to hide small cell counts, but for this example we'll just leave them. And then if you recall, if we do have a significant chi-square value, we need to look at the standardized residuals as well to uh, examine where the significant differences lie. So we can just check that in advance. And then format, you can leave it here. And bootstrap, you don't need to select anything either. So once all of those options are selected, we can proceed. So the output is uh, pretty straightforward. We have three tables. 
So the first table just gives us an, in, uh, an indication of how many participants we have and whether or not we were able to use everyone. So if someone's missing data on one of the two variables, we can't use them, so they would go in here, and then we'd have an adjusted total. In this example, everyone had data on both uh, variables, so 100% of the sample was retained. So next we have our table. So we can see here that we have gender, male, female, and type of person, morning, afternoon, and evening. So we can see here uh, for males and females, we have the count, expected count, and the standardized residual. So what we're looking for is, um, first we need to confirm that each of our groups had a minimum of five on the count row. So if we look here, we have 10, five, we're good, 19, 17, 14, and five. So everything's good. Uh, you can see here that this is the total frequencies for each row. So we had 34 males and 36 females. And then we also have the totals for each column. Or sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, column. So we have 27 morning people, 19 afternoon people, and 24 evening people. And if you're to add up those or add up these, you're going to get to a total of 70. And then within each cell, since we asked SPSS to also generate the expected count, we can see here what it should be in each cell. So we have 13.1, 19.2, 11.7, etc. And then we see the same thing for the females by type of person. So before we look at the standardized residuals, uh, we do want to look down here at the chi-square test. So essentially, we just need to interpret this first row here. So we have a chi-square value for two degrees of freedom, which is equal to 14.199 or 14.20. And in this case, it is significant at the p is smaller than 0.001 level. So that means that somewhere in this table, there are unexpected frequencies, in that the frequencies we observed are different than what would have been expected due to chance. So if you recall, to identify exactly where those differences are, we need to look at the standardized residuals. And anything bigger than 1.96 or smaller than negative 1.96 would indicate that we have a significant difference. So what we see here is that for evening person, we have a standardized residual of 2.2 for males and negative 2.1 for females. And if we look at the actual value, we see that um, we have 19 and we're expected to have about 12 people, whereas on the female side, we have five and we're also expected to have about 12. Uh, so what we can conclude looking at this is that Males were more likely to be evening people than expected, and females were less likely to be evening people than expected. Uh, the other four groups are the standardized residuals are too small to be significant, so we can conclude that any differences between the observed and the expected are just due to measurement error and not any kind of significant effect. So in this case, overall, the chi-square has told us that there's something going on in here, and when we look closer, uh, we realize that it's at the evening person variable, and it has to do with the males being more likely to be even, or reporting the, their evening people more often than expected, and females less often than expected. And that's it for running a chi-square.